Let's talk about the number one antidote to allergies, okay? Now, whether you have allergies or food sensitivities, let's talk about how you can actually get rid of those. But what is the difference between a true allergy and a food sensitivity? Well, there's several things that are uh, different with each one. A true allergy uh, involves a protein, but with a food sensitivity, many times there is a delayed reaction. Okay, so you eat this certain thing and you don't feel any difference for about two to six hours later, sometimes even up to 72 hours later. And this makes it very, very difficult to connect the dots because it can show up in a headache. It can show up in a mood change like depression. It can show up in fatigue. It can show up as Crohn's or some type of inflammation in your gut. It can show up in your skin as eczema, or it can show up in your joints as arthritis. But if you wanted to figure out what food sensitivities you have, um, you can get what's called an IgG test, which basically it's, it's a type of antibody uh, test. But with food sensitivities, there's more of a generalized discomfort, usually not a severe symptom, but with food allergies, there's more of a severe inflammatory symptom or even a very uh, life-threatening situation where you have an anaphylactic shock. So the question is, how do you deal with these? Is there a non-drug safe uh, antidote or remedy for allergies or food sensitivities? Now, there definitely is. A very valid uh, form of uh, therapy is just the elimination diet, right? You figure out what you are sensitive to, and then you avoid that for a period of time. And then sometimes uh, it can even go away. But there's something even more powerful than that I want to touch on. Now, you have to realize that um, allergies originate in your gut. Something happens with the permeability um, in your gut. So you start to get a leaky gut, which is just the tight junctions in your gut start to open up. And then some of these particles, uh, whether it's a protein or other particles, can get through that little barrier. And then your immune system can react to it. And then you start developing antibodies to this specific um, particle or food. And it gets really confusing because let's say you have a peanut allergy. The protein in peanuts is very similar to almonds. So you may have a true almond allergy that can also show up as a peanut allergy. So I'm not gonna get into that complexity now because what I'm gonna talk about is how just to improve your immune system to the point where you don't have allergies anymore. So. The antidote to allergies is called autophagy. It's a condition where your body is eliminating proteins that you don't need anymore because they're somewhat damaged. It is a survival mechanism that your body has been using for a very, very long time to help protect you against various things. Because if there's some type of defect or impairment with this normal autophagy condition, and then these proteins can exist and create a lot of problems for people. There's been a direct uh, link between impairments in autophagy and Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, lung fibrosis, and a whole list of other problems. So this is a very important um, normal process that goes on in our body. It's your body's way of dealing with um, a lot of uh, damage things, like even damage within your DNA or damage within the mitochondria, which can create a lot of problems and even increase your risk for cancer. And uh, autophagy is also an anti-aging process because as you age, autophagy can come in there and help clean up some of the old damaged proteins that uh, need to be removed, giving you not just a youthful look, but better functioning body. And autophagy can even decrease infections. It can remove um, long-standing viruses from your body, like Epstein-Barr virus, the human uh, papillomavirus, and other pathogens that shouldn't be in your body. So autophagy is a really good thing, but as far as allergies go, there's a lot of great data on this, which I'm going to put the links down below, that you can increase the expression of autophagy to help decrease allergies. So the research I'm going to supply you shows that you can decrease allergies, sensitivities, histamine levels, levels of IgG, which are basically the antibodies that are involved in sensitivities, 
Autophagy can repair the immune system. It can rebuild your immune system. It can enhance the immune defense system, and it can reduce pulmonary inflammation. So now the big question is, how do we increase autophagy in the body? And there's several things you can do. The most powerful one is fasting, okay? Fasting is the most powerful stimulus of autophagy. Now, what I would recommend if you have allergies is I would start doing intermittent fasting immediately and do that on a regular basis, okay? That alone just might eliminate your allergies, especially as you increase your fasting window, okay? To like 18 hours or maybe 20 hours or even getting on one meal a day. But there's some additional things you can do that will take you to the next level. And that would be to do periodic prolonged fasting, okay? So let's say every month or every two weeks, you do a 48 hour fast or every month you do a 72 hour fast. You're gonna make a serious dent into any problem with your immune system to the fact where uh, that alone might handle your allergies. But you're gonna find over time, your allergies will be less and less and less and less. And the cool thing about fasting is it will drop inflammation. So even if you have allergies, you'll have a heck of a lot less inflammation. And not to mention that about 70 to 80% of your immune system is located in your gut. And fasting does wonders for your gut because you don't eat and it allows the gut a chance to heal as well as improve the diversity and the strength of the microbiome. I don't know if you knew this or not, but your microbiome, the friendly bacteria in your gut, um, greatly help modulate or control your immune system. So anything you can do to improve the microbes is going to help you reduce allergies. In fact, babies who experience a C-section are at a much greater risk of getting allergies than the children that have the normal birthing process because they weren't exposed to the friendly bacteria that the mother uh, would normally give a child. And the next thing is regular or consistent exercise can greatly improve uh, autophagy. Green tea can help stimulate autophagy. And turmeric and other similar herbs can also stimulate and boost autophagy. All right, so now there are other things that can also lessen allergies that I would recommend adding to fasting, okay? Probiotics, taking probiotics on a regular basis, since 80% of your immune system is your microbiome, taking probiotics can greatly, greatly reduce allergies. I would recommend taking your probiotics right before bed. Okay, the third thing is vitamin D3. What's unique about vitamin D is that it helps to suppress uh, immune reactions without suppressing the immune system. That's why they use vitamin D in something like uh, the cytokine storm, where there's this, this uncontrollable inflammatory reaction or hypersensitivity. So vitamin D is really, really important. And I would take um, no less than 10,000 IUs every single day or more, probably 20,000 IUs or even 30,000 IUs, depending on the severity of the allergy. There's some great data, which I'll put a link down below, that shows that the development of an allergy occurs when someone has a zinc deficiency. So taking zinc would be a very logical thing to do. Now the question is, how do I do fasting? Okay, is there a good way? Well, I just happened to have a video on that. Check it out, I put it right here. 